It's amazing to me to think about the conversations that people have with their pet. Yeah, my Charlie, my golden doodle, she's four. She knows my innermost thoughts. See, I don't do that with my with my two dogs. You don't? I, I talk, but it's more like sit, stay, you want to go outside, are you hungry? Aww. You know, those kind of things. But I don't sit down and have like a full throttle conversation and bare my soul. Oh, I will get in Charlie's face and I'm like, I, I just don't understand why that that is happening and i will lay it all out for her and she just looks at me with her big old disney eyes and i'm just like i mean she looks like a little cartoon character and i feel that she feels me that she understands and she would fix huh. it if she could and so i bear my soul to her when i talk to copper the younger one it's more of a you really shouldn't be eating the drywall <laughs> This is our home. <laughs> <laughs> Scott talks to his cats, but it's about birds, I think, right? Yeah, we do some bird watching. And I'll say, oh, look at that bird over there. Because we have some feeders in the backyard, so we like that. And then I don't know if all cats do this, but mine do the little chirp when they see the bird. They go, choo, 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 choo. It's like they're talking to the birds. Really? And it's almost like that's so, the one I want to eat. I think that's, that's right. what the that's cat's what I'm, saying. That's what I'm thinking. Here you are <laughs> bird watching, but the cat's thinking lunch. Lunch, correct. But yeah. I'm amazed that they're kind of chirping at the birds. I've never heard a cat do that before. What's it's it's amazing. It's just a very like, chirp, 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 you know, and they're they're talking to the you birds. Always, you sound like you're barking. I know. Rup, rup. <laughs> I'm not doing Your it right. Are but weird, that, that's Scott. what it is. Sounds like Your cats real high pitch. Weird. You're listening to Rob and Liz in the morning. His radio. So Scott, who does our news, I don't know if you heard this earlier, but Scott's cat chirps like birds. <laughs> She does. Yeah. Every time we'll look out the back window, look at the birds, and suddenly she'll start doing the little chip, 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 chip. And I think it's like, hey, I'd like to have that for lunch. <laughs> like enticing them over like Duck Dynasty, you know, Come doing closer. the little yeah. calls. Come this calls. way. Yeah. It's interesting the conversations that you'll have with pets. Oh, yeah. I bear my soul, especially to Charlie, the older golden doodle. She knows all my inner thoughts. And, Isn't that something? Yeah. I don't talk to my dog like that. Oh, I do. I'm like, I need your help. I just need to run this past She has a you. conversation. I mean, really, yeah. she bears everything. Look straight in her eyes. It's wild. Yeah. It's wild. Do we have a text? No. I do have Lonnie. Lonnie's on the phone. What was this about the cat, Lonnie? What were your thoughts about that? I just overheard y'all talking about the cat when it sees the bird. Yeah, it chirps. I got a. I rescued a cat out of Lexington, South Carolina, over ten years, about ten years ago, and it's a house cat. We see it in a half bath, and he'll sit on my knee, up on my knee, and put his hands on up in the window. And the birds comes and gets the cat food. The cats for the cats outside. And yeah, when he sees the birds, he chirps. That must be the universal. Uh, I can't wait to eat you. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but I got a minute. I got a run outside. I can go to the door and pull the curtain back on the door and look out, and he'll do it at me. He'll be sitting up on the rail. He'll be, and you can see his mouth do the little chirpy thing. <laughs> he wants to eat you. He's pretty cool. Yeah. Now I'm just trying to figure out what the half bathtub thing's all about. Ha no, it's a half bath. Oh, like it oh. has the the sink and then the commode in Full there. Full bath, half bath. Okay, right. I'm getting it. What? Sitting on the toilet with a cat on the knee looking out the window. Yeah. Okay. The com what? What's wrong with saying commode? This, I haven't heard that in like years. Is it not a commode? It's like something my grandma would say. Is it right next to the credenza? <laughs> Y'all need credenza. to. Y'all leave me alone. <laughs> You're listening to Rob and Liz in the morning. His radio. My first initial thought when I never visited one, I thought, what's the big deal about a gas station? Come on, really? It's Rob and Liz in the morning, his radio. And until I walked into one, I'm like, oh, okay, I get why people make such a buzz over Bucky's. I remember this conversation. So we were talking about it, and Rob was like, I just don't. I don't understand. It's a gas station. I mean, come on. It's a gas station. I'm like, but I hear so, it so much more. We're all traveling together, and Harlan from Brian and Harlan in the afternoon was like, you've got to stop at Bucky's. You've got to stop at Bucky's. There's one along the way. you got to stop at Bucky's. We stopped at Bucky's. And she was really over the moon about the beaver nuggets. I walked out with a cowboy hat. <laughs> you did. He did. So we're all waiting in the uh, in the parking lot, and here comes Rob with a cowboy hat on. We're like, is that is that Rob? Is that that text that what? guy there, Rob? What's that Kevin Costner? Yeah. Or no, Rob. Okay, Kevin gotcha. Costner. Come on, <laughs> come on. So I, I mean, it's like I, what the hardest. 
So Scott's a resident expert <laughs> of Bucky's. Yeah. Okay, how in the world would you even describe a Bucky's? It's like I don't know. It's like super size gas station. It's really hard to put your finger on it. Yeah, but you and shop know, there, and then there's all this food and the cleanest that, bathrooms on the planet. And cleanest then, bathrooms, every type of beef jerky that you can imagine. Um, they have, you know, housewares, arts and crafts, things like that. But it's the like thing you can I shop love there the like a nuggets. Walmart. You can get everything from a kolache or a cinnamon roll to a swimsuit to, I mean, just... Anything you want. Beaver nuggets, nuggets, which is what they call them. Aren't those tater tots? No. What are no. they? No. It's like, it's almost like puffed corn or popcorn or something. And then it has like caramel. I just You know what it reminds it. me of? Ooh, the what? corn pop cereal. Yes. But it, it's better. It has like a caramel sweet crunchy coating. I no wonder it's, why it's I crunchier. didn't like it because I don't like corn pops. Rob de, no, Rob de also doesn't like caramel. So no, I it don't. was kind of not in your I wheelhouse. Don't. I yeah. don't. So here's the thing. Next time you're traveling on I, I-40 and you're going to, I don't know, Gatlinburg or something, Sevierville, Tennessee. Mm-hmm. Hardest name to pronounce when you look at the word. <laughs> Sevierville, Tennessee. Right off the exit there, Bucky's going up. And it's going to open sometime p- after May. Yeah, it was supposed to open up this month. They pushed it a little bit, uh, probably because of all the rain and all the stuff. Here's, here's the big deal. Bucky's already. I mean, some people go and it's like, I'm never coming again. I, I was just so anxious in this place. It's very overwhelming when you go in. They have, they have, they're calling this the world's largest Bucky's. I think most of them have like a hundred gas pumps. This Not all of them. Some of them have less. Oh, really? But this is 120 mm, gas pumps. And then they have the EV chargers for the cars. Yeah. 200 foot long car wash. I've never seen a car wash at a Bucky's. And, and the whole place all together is 7,400 square feet. 74,000. 74,000. Oh, that's overwhelming. I it thought 7,400 was big. Well, you walk in and you feel like you're at Times Square in New York City. Like, it's just like people, people, people barbecue, everywhere, yeah. buckies, nuggets, and swimsuits, and wow! And cowboy hats, and Liz screaming like that. Right? Until I get my bearings, and then it's straight to the brisket. You're listening to Rob and Liz in the morning. His radio. They're calling it the world's largest Bucky's. It's going to be in Sevierville, Tennessee, right off of uh, I-40. So you won't miss it once it's up and going. I mean, it's already monstrous looking at it as they're constructing the thing right now. I know, and it may be a month or two before it gets underway. But, so Monette weighed in on Bucky's in general at 8 800-447-7234. And basically, Monette is not impressed. She said, <laughs> Why is that, Monette? My definition of a Bucky's is it's a glorified convenience store. It's Well, it's huge. It's crazy. It is honking huge. And it's hundreds of gas pumps. Mm-hmm. It's a store with convenient stuff in there and a bunch of food and the cleanest restrooms. Now, I will say, Monette, you're correct in that. But I will say... It has now been added to my list if we're traveling, like a road trip. She's stopping. That I will stop Mm -hmm. for the bathrooms, for sure. Because there's a couple of places, uh, Chick-fil-A, that's about one of the places. That I'll stop to use the potty. Because it's clean. Yeah, and I'll it's buy really something clean. when I go in, but yeah. Bucks. So Danny's here at his radio. It's Rob and Liz at 800-447-7234. What's your thought here, Danny? Bucky's is a tax your thing. And I, I find it very hilarious that y'all have figured out what Bucky's is. But it is definitely a Texas thing. And it's even bigger in Texas because everything in Texas is bigger. Yeah, I mean, from the but. belt buckles to the Buckies to the beaver nuggets and everything. <laughs> oh, yes. No, see, the beaver nuggets is the thing. You cannot leave there without the beaver nuggets. I can. Anyway, I'm on my way to teach school, so I just had to pop in. Um, I saw y'all last week at Bojangles in Fiveport. I was in the Snoopy hat, and I was doing a drive-by because I had to go. I teach second grade here in Fiveport. So I'm like, yeah, drive through and say, hey, y'all. But um, anyway, I just had to pop in and say, that's a Texas thing. That's my Texas route. And I love Bucky. Um, I'm so glad to see it here. You're listening to Rob and Liz in the morning. His radio. I want to see something like this happen. Yeah, on US 98 in Mobile, just outside of Mobile, dude driving down the road on his jet ski. How does that happen? On How? US 98, driving down the road on his jet ski. No, it was not being towed by a trailer. Do they it, have it, wheels? He literally was. Jet skis don't traditionally have wheels. That's what I was thinking. Evidently, he outfitted his. He put his own little type of headlights on it, and it's street legal and licensed. 
how is that? How is that street legal? I like, know. I, he, but he managed to do it. I don't know if it's like a moped street legal, but he managed. He put some wheels on it. He's driving down the road. He doesn't even live in Alabama. So he, I don't know if he took this thing on a cross-country trip or whatnot, but the police did pull him over. It's like, hey, what? And then they realized, oh, it's got wheels. It's street legal. It's licensed. It's from another state. They gave him a warning and moved him on his way. How do you buckle up? You don't buckle you don't up buckle on, a on a motorcycle. motorcycle. I, I guess mean, not. Nice question, though. At least Liz was thinking about safety. One thing he wasn't doing, and I and it must be a requirement in Alabama. I don't know this, but they did uh, ask him to next time put on a helmet. But why? I, what? What? <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't understand. What don't you understand? Jet why? skis. Dude put wheels on it. But why? Drove it down the road. But and why? Went through because. But why? He can't. Rob and Liz, his morning crew. I don't know when the last time was that you're at the beach, but you probably have the thoughts of the seaweed that can come up on shore. I'm from Tampa Bay, Florida, and so along St. Pete Beach and Clearwater Beach, there are times when the seaweed can be overwhelming on the shore. And it's awful when you go to the ocean and you're expecting the blue water and then that. Yeah, there's Ugh. that floating all over the place. Yeah. It gets all over you. When it's up on land, it, when it starts to dry out, oh, the smell. <laughs> and then some people eat it. Mm, oh, yeah. It's My great son, for salad. Yeah. Mm. Well, it's for salad. I won't say it's great for salad, but it's, it's for salad. It's great for salad. <laughs> so there's got to be other purposes for seaweed, right? Sure. I mean, God made seaweed, and there's got to be more of a purpose than it just landing on shore and just sitting there. And so there was this brilliant mind and people that got together in Denmark and said, hey, let's build schools out of it. How does that work? I, seaweed it's is... It's literally the insulation. So mixing it with straw and literally the seaweed, they were able to, to make an insulation out of it. So in between the wood and the walls and all that stuff, the seaweed is there and it's helping with carbon emissions and all that other stuff that they want to tackle and get out of the way. And so it's so instead of that insulation that you usually see pumped into the walls, it's seaweed and straw. Well, I mean, might as well some, use something that we have an abundance of, but it's hard to, you know, when my, my youngest son orders seaweed for him to have on his salads or whatever. Good it, man. It seems very brittle. Like when you pick it up, it just sort of crumbles in your hand or it can. It's nice. And then when it's in the ocean, it's, ugh, you know, yeah. so it's, there's got to be like a process. Grass. But so do they make make a paste out of it almost with the straw and it all mixes together and she's I don't asking know. me. Sorry. Rob and Liz, his morning crew. Not only do you put it on salad, there's a school in Denmark using it for insulation and it's working. Robin Liz in the morning, his radio. Joni also said, don't forget about seaweed wraps for your body. She texted 800 447 7234. And I'm like, yeah, you know, I've heard of that and I've wanted to try one. She said she was not a fan of it because she said she'd rather have the oily rocks and the hot towels. So, seaweed. Body wrap. Wrap. Can I ask, is this like a weight loss thing? You, you wrap know, yourself, you lose the weight because I, of seaweed? I think there may be a weight loss component of it, but I think it's also just to um, moisturize and possibly exfoliate. Probably more like moisturize. But Ew. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I've done a mud one. <laughs> I didn't like it. A mud seaweed? No, a mud wrap like thing a map, uh, i know. don't do that for free stuff <laughs> it's so weird my, Some the, of it. my version of the spa is going to sports clip and they rub my head after they cut my hair <laughs> and give you a hot towel and a hot towel yes. on the face there's my <laughs> spa treatment right there uh, okay nathan's here about seaweed at 800-447-7234 okay what about the seaweed nathan i didn't know about it you know for a little bit but uh they use seaweed to make ice cream too Ooh. so what they do is you know, get, it, that's how it kind of gets its form, the way it's wet. What in the world does it taste like? It tastes like regular ice cream because I think every ice cream uses it. So vanilla, chocolate, your favorite, whatever it is. It's not seaweed flavor. Thank goodness. Yeah, it's just regular. I mean, I love ice cream, too, and seaweed helps. You're listening to Rob and Liz in the Morning. His radio. I don't think I've ever seen this in my life. It's Rob and Liz in the Morning, his radio. I'm hearing about tipping at the self-checkout. 
Mm-mm. I've never seen this line item. Do you want to leave a tip? Who do you leave a tip for when you're checking yourself out? I don't understand that. Well, there's a person that sort of watches over the self-checkout. Uh, there's a grocery store not far from here that I'll run into every now and then, do the self-checkout really quickly, and I always feel like I'm being watched like a hawk. <laughs> like, I'm not trying to take the yogurt, I promise. But that would be the person. They get the tip? So what they're doing is they say they're taking it and they're distributing it between the cashiers, the customer service people, the stock people, and this kind of thing. That doesn't happen at the normal register. It doesn't. Where they actually do work for right. you. Right. So I don't I don't know. And maybe it, it's leading to that as well. I just feel like the tipping is like out of control so much so that I feel like I need to hand uh, Rob a dollar and tip oh, him for a, I'll take a job that you're being paid for <laughs> already. I don't. I don't know what I did, like, but but thank you for the buck. Well, I'll spend it very wisely. You know wisely. what? You know what? I don't know what you did either. Mm-hmm. Other than what we. She show doesn't up. know what I did either. You know what That's I mean? That's really nice, Scott. I need help. <laughs> oh my word! She says I show up and do nothing. Did you hear that? That's not. I what don't I believe said. that, but I will take that dollar that she just I, handed you. But you know. that's not Hand what that I over said. Here. What yeah. I said was. There you go. You and thank I you. and Scott are already. We're already being paid for. Showing up and doing our job, so tips on top of that are kind of strange. Well, to at me. self checkouts and other places, yes. it is. I know people are getting fatigued with it. Oh, it's everywhere. I, we went and got an ice cream the other day, and they literally scooped the ice cream and gave it to us. And then it was like, um, "Would you like to leave a tip?" And it had like 10, 15, 20, 25 percent. I was like, "You literally just." Oh, I wonder if that's a template. Some ice cream. It is, but should it be there? That's my whole question. Should it even be there? If- be- because now, I mean, listen, there's a lot of iPads and tablets that are being used that they scan it with. So yes. I wonder if it's just a, a template that people don't know that you can alter and change. Well, when they go a step further and they mention, if you'd like to leave a tip for us, I was like, oh. There's usually a tip jar at some of those kind of places. Yes. Every now and then I'll slip something in it. And that's the thing. If I am compelled or moved to do it, absolutely. I'll throw in, you know, one, five, whatever it is. But self-checkouts and that kind of thing. Like if I'm washing my own car at one of those self, do I need to leave a tip for somebody that I don't ever see? No, no. They tip you. You're listening to Rob and Liz in the Morning. His radio. It's interesting how Liz talks to her Siri. It's Rob and Liz in the Morning, his radio. Yeah, it's a little more formal because I want Siri to understand me. So I'll say, hey, Siri, like really slow and pointed. And does she go out? Let's see. Hey, Siri. Hey, Siri. There she goes. Yeah, on my Apple Watch. Nice. Now she's she's You're fancy. But I don't talk to her like I talk <laughs> What did it say? I don't know. Something I didn't get that. I, I'm not sure I understand that. You no, know, it never does. Why why don't Our you intellect strives for clarity. Our nature is drawn to ambiguity. Okay. All right. <laughs> he doesn't talk to me like a real person either. <laughs> So most of us talk kind of robotically to our, like if you're talking to Alexa, if you're talking to Siri, we get a little more robotic because we want them to understand what we're actually saying. And they okay. still have a really hard time with it. So if you're talking to AI, and that wouldn't that be considered AI? Sure. You don't. You, you just don't. live your world. That's okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're listening to Rob and Liz in the Morning. His radio. It's Rob and Liz in the Morning, his radio. University of South Carolina had their graduation, I guess about a week or so ago. And one of the graduates that was uh, walking through decided to add a little something different to her attire. She had the cap, she had the gown, but she was wearing some really odd shoes. Really? What yeah. made them odd? Well, they were really big. So they weren't like um, clogs or Crocs oh, or anything like that. Too big for her. It's like she had, I don't know. No, they, I'm, I'm guessing here. Her feet are maybe what seven inches. No. Her shoe size, and she had on a size twelve or you know no, Shaquille O'Neal shoes. No, they fit, but they were probably bigger than what Shaquille O'Neal would wear. Like so, clown shoes or something. Bigger than clown shoes. So she's walking around. They're like they're uh, yellow, bright yellow, and she's walking around. But she can navigate them, man. And then she starts pumping up the crowd she's like yes we're graduating yes and so all she's stuff. running back and forth yes. like the hype man yes and here's why she is the, the uh, gamecock mascot at least one of them 
so she's wearing the feet just of the, the mascot. Feet. Just the chicken I feet. I get it. Okay. <laughs> I know. So well, it was, good for her. And it was very cool because she continued that mascot persona as she was walking up to get her degree. Biomedical engineering degree. Really? So girl is super smart. Mm-hmm. And think about what she had to do to be the mascot, or if you're a football player, if you're a cheerleader, whatever, you've got all those extracurricular activities, and yet you're still acing it so you can get your degree. So she's phenomenal. Her name is Sarah Sylvester. Congratulations, Sarah. You're listening to Rob and Liz in the morning. His radio. So they're signing people up all weekend long for the best summer ever and the trip to Universal Studios. So the Fun Patrol's out. Oh, by the way, they'll be at for King and Country in Savannah tonight. Oh, yeah, that show is tonight. So that's Mm going to be huge. Fun Patrol's going to be there. Get you registered, get you signed up to win that trip to Universal. And then uh, they're, you know, taking maybe Friday off and then they're headed to Mayfest. Right. In Bluffton. Mother's Day weekend celebrating with you in Bluffton. And uh, it's going to be good. I tell you, when you run into the Fun Patrol and they sign you up with his radio to win the best summer ever. Yeah. And, you know, when you say it's the best summer ever, you kind of got to deliver that. So it's going to be everywhere. His Radio Fun Patrol is going to be everywhere. Festivals, baseball games, there's some free concerts that are mixed in there. And it's all pointing to your family possibly going on that trip to Universal Orlando. Text Summer right now. If you want to just sign up and you've got other plans for the weekend, can't be anywhere near any of the Fun Patrol, we'll get you signed up to win the best summer ever and the trip for your family to Universal. Text the word SUMMER, 800-447-7234. That's 800-447-7234 for the best summer ever.